to the saints today we are talking about how to get focused truly focused and avoid distraction so that you can get all the things that you want in life this is a topic that i'm extremely serious about because the good things that i've experienced in life have wholly been due to discipline focus consistency tenacity none of which have anything to do with inherent iq privilege being born into a wealthy family it's been all hustle and all muscle you dig so if you really want the best things in life you can have it but some of you aren't serious and some of you don't have the skills and knowledge the skills and knowledge we can easily provide to you now in terms of the seriousness that's within you one thing i have done to help you with that uh, bridget is going to put it into the uh, description is i gave a speech during basic training it was really about intention and intentionality your nia your your decision to do something you you never really do something unless you're committed to it i gave a speech during basic training that i think will help you guys buy products from those in your community who produce them because when you buy from people that you know and love that dollar stays within your community be your community your local neighborhood be it the assassin be it your ethnic group or your religious community the big corporations would rather you buy their stuff uh, someone was asking if the Yonkey video is on Patreon. Absolutely, it is on Patreon. And just recently, we uploaded quite a few exclusive pieces to Patreon. We have one of my personal favorites, How Charles Manson Controlled His Girls, a brilliant piece. We have another work that basically talks about USSR Soviet subversion and how it turned America and the West at large into drug culture and hippie culture. That's a masterwork. I think that one's about two hours. And of course, we have the video on Mufti Menk. Um, which uh, is also a significant piece, a very passionate piece. We got to take some clips from that one. That is on patreon.com slash the saint in the center. Kevin said the saints in Florida will be meeting up in person to fellowship this evening. So we will have to catch the replay. Thank you, Mr. Burton, for creating this community of like-minded individuals. Peace to the saints. Tuition from the Florida assassin. Peace to the saints. Good to hear from the Florida assassin. And uh, may you all use the lessons that were taught in basic training and you operate according to our principles and protocol. And we also have Jaden said, how to deal with women who pull back? Number one, there are various, there are not various types of women. There's really just a couple types of women, but there are various behaviors that they confront you with. The first thing you want to figure out is forget what's on their mind, what's on your mind, meaning what is your goal with that woman? Is she a main girl? Is she a side girl? Is she a one hitter quitter? Based on that, you should decide how much attention, how much capital you allocate to this girl. Once you've decided on what your outcome is, then you can define the strategy that you want to utilize with her. When the female makes a pullback, that could be for a variety of reasons. I can only assume that you have some time invested with the girl, which is why you have enough data points to identify a pullback. That being the case, you should really be in the Dr. Phil process because you've known her for enough time. And in the Dr. Phil process, that allows you to understand her thinking and her driving forces and know that some females are very whimsical and uh, in some cases it's because they're ditzy and dimwitted. In other cases, it's because they have a lot of options and they don't view you as the best option. But you want to do a little bit of research and figure out what that is. But one thing I can assure you is that the girl who's making a pullback on you is probably not the girl that you want to have as a main piece unless there's a legitimate reason for that. And school is not a legitimate reason. Um, I'm busy is not a legitimate reason. Um, I really can't think of anything other than she's about to take the MCAT or she's studying for the SAT. Uh, beyond that, eh. It looks like y'all can be back to back on PayPal. So the first one says, thank you for this live request. I'm taking notes and going to have to replay for sure for the questions I have. Peace to the Saints. Peace to the Saints. He says, peace to the Saints. Marquette, I was messing with this Latina chick at work. At the same uh -huh. time, I was learning to speak Spanish. Okay. 73 day streak strong. I noticed that once I stopped messing with her, my drive to learn Spanish stopped after two weeks now. Does it mean I'm more motivated by a female? I'm not disciplined nor mature enough by my willpower, which you would like to do anyway. Vilkin, I'm glad you brought that up because truth be told, when I was in high school, for example, I would have been a much better Spanish student had I had the motivation of a female. 
it is no doubt that the human male at particular stages of development are more motivated by carnal desires, and that's biologically determined. For example, when I, when I went into university, I was motivated by greater things. But there's nothing wrong with that. And in fact, you'd be wise to be able to strategically manipulate the self. And what I mean by that, if you've been able to identify that you know what's driving you, you know what gets you up in the morning, what makes you stay focused on something, and you've identified it as a big booty Latina or big booty Dominican, well, then go ahead and put them in play if they're going to help you get to the goal faster. But here, because here's the key even if you use a thick Dominican chick to help you learn Spanish, when she disappears, your Spanish knowledge remains. That's the key. So there's nothing wrong with utilizing the environment to drive your internal world as well. So the next question says, peace to the saints. In the order of health, wealth, and relationships, relationships especially with my social skills and females, I lack a lot on purpose, though. I'm not in a position of wealth I truly want to be at. Is building wealth more important than learning social skills, a.k.a. spinning game for strike or growth from 22 years old? These things should all be occurring in concert. The problem is sometimes we try to separate things, not realizing that there has to be integration in life. For example, a part of building wealth is building team. One of the major topics of the basic training was team. Teams are critically important. A lot of males uh, were not raised in the traditional sense of you know decades past where you would grow up you play t-ball or pop warner football it teaches you a lot of skills that are involved in what's called man culture man culture is what dominates corporations and this is based on teams and teams are where we develop our social skills as young persons so you're actually supposed to have social skills which support your financial pursuits because it takes teamwork to make the dream work uh, how often do you see a corporation of one no, the, the CEO runs a C-suite. The C-suite runs managers. Managers run individual workers and supervisors. It's a big apparatus. So these things should be developed in parallel. And in your case, since you're talking about social skills and communications in particular, I highly recommend you purchase basic training because specifically what, what I talked about that's going to be useful to you during basic training was I talked about uh, specifically uh, female nature and then how that evolves into what we call woman culture talked about male nature or boy culture or, or boy nature and how that evolved into man culture and how that maps on the corporate culture and then we talked about how you utilize the knowledge of those two things and how that reflects the way you communicate with each gender and the way you manage each gender. So the social and the financial really go in parallel, whether we're talking about running a corporation or climbing up the corporate ladder. Uh, so those are the things we talked about in basic training. There's particularly uh, two points where I want you to focus. One is called power talk. You dig? We talking how bosses talk. Power talk helps you be successful in all interactions. And then more importantly, our power moves, which is what are you going to do? You could talk it, but you also got to be able to walk it. Yes, basic training is, oh, is it on marquetism.com? Oh, I didn't delete it from assassin.com. Okay, all right. Okay, we have Vulcan again. Said so Marquette, in your 20s, building your multi million dollar company, what was the slightest thing that held you back to reaching your success sooner? Or do you believe you did everything you could do and with only time, staying patient, even to the success will come? Peace to the saints. There were two things. Number one was fear. Fear was a great impediment to my success and also to my focus. Fear is a distraction, fear is a liar, fear is a discourager. Fear is something that's going to hurt all of us and it's going to haunt us throughout life lest we deal with it. The second thing was vice, vice, being focused on the wrong things that eat away at you rather than grow you or nourish you. So when we're talking about vice, you might be talking about uh, excessive consumption of women. You heard me devouring shorties by the dozen. That's a problem, especially if they're low women and mostly they are. Or you're talking about drugs or gambling or alcoholism. I'm just giving examples. These are not things that I engaged in. But vice in vice and fear, I'd say those are the two things that trouble me most. And that's typical of young men. You, you suffer vice because you're immature and underdeveloped and inexperienced. You suffer um, fear because you don't have enough experience to know that the things that are plaguing your mind are really not real, nor are they actually scary. Your mind's playing tricks on you. 
Okay. I think it'll be very beneficial. Okay. We have a Wilkins next question. Says so Mark, but I could think really big, but thinking small is the problem. I set goals for myself, but there are big ones like travel the world, make X amount of money by this age, multiple income sources, etc. When was building your company and when you were building your company in your twenties, what principle and task on a daily basis did you do to reach those big goals? Well, really, you don't want to talk to the 20 year old Marquette. You want to talk to the Marquette in the present because the 20 year old Marquette could only operate based on what he knew and not based on or what he was guessing, what he was believing, not what on what he had done, what he had accomplished. So what I know now is that the key is first have this piece of knowledge. You will achieve any real goal that you have. If it's a real goal and it's ascertainable by you, you're going to achieve it. That's number one. So you must have faith and peace and dispense with fear and worry. That's number one. Then number two, the ability to, uh, shall we say, dream big and plan small. That's what separates uh, fakers and liars from those who are serious and pursuing real things in life. Those are the ones who are actually gonna get at it, get after, and this is what I mean. If you have a, a so there's a difference between the pipe dream and the real dream. Uh, if you have a pipe dream, that means you are currently making $30,000 a year, but you're talking about being a millionaire. That's a pipe dream, it's a pipe dream. You don't even have the foggiest sense of what a million dollars is. Um, so that's a pipe dream. A real dream while you're making $30,000 would be to start making $60,000 to double your income would be very significant. So once you've doubled your income and you got to 60K, now 100K is realistic. You get to 100K, now a million dollars makes sense. But it doesn't make sense to someone who's earning 30,000 a year. So you want real dreams, not pipe dreams. And when you have a real dream as opposed to a pipe dream, then you have a meaningful goal and you'll actually pursue it with greater vigor because you, you subconsciously know it's possible. That's number one. And when we say plan small, dream big, dream enormous, but plan small. Plan small means that you hyper-focus on the next step that is gonna get you to the most immediate goal. And I would encourage you, and I've even dropped mine down to 14 day sprints. If you're going to set a goal, your long-term goal is 14 days. You might mark what? That's not very long-term. Precisely. That's because the human mind has trouble sustaining focus over a long period of time. You don't have to catch up and decline that request. Okay. People have audacity. You just can't accidentally decline it right now. Okay. Yes, I can. <laughs> Carry on, you caught up? No. We have Matthew said, peace to the saints. I got the keys today. Our talk was energizing. Congratulations to Matthew. One of the saints just got him a new place in a great uh, area. Okay, we have Mr. Man in action said, peace to the saints. Looking forward to this topic. Yes, indeed. Let's work. Walton said, will you put up the Harvey Milk slide? Let me make a note on that one if it's not already up. St. Flo said, it costs to be a boss. Thank you, sold, not told. Mm. And, yes. Go ahead. and that's so real. When he says it costs to be a boss, that's something that a lot of um, poor people don't understand because they have a poverty mentality. It's not poverty in the pocket. It's poverty in the mind that ails them. That's something that a lot of African-Americans don't understand. Um, that's something that females often don't understand. And of course, children don't understand. It's because females and children often have things paid for for them. But a real man, we know that you don't get to end up anywhere unless you earned it. Shout to Sisto. Yeah. Omari said, tuition, appreciate you covering this topic. I could use some help with my focus. I'm very good at finding ways to distract myself. Peace to the saints. Precisely. Well, he went back, he sent additional money. He said for Alejandro, it was not the full question, but Alejandro actually did send the extra money on Super Chat as well. I have it read, but thank okay. you, Walton. We appreciate that. I'll get to Alejandro in a second. Okay. Marco says, peace to the Saints, tuition for the post workout game. Yes, indeed. And I just finished my workout as well. And it was, it was quite a rigorous workout. I am currently uh, injured. I have actually two injuries, unfortunately, one in the knee, one in the calf. Um, but it's okay. You know, I'm still getting in. I'm doing what I can do. The worst thing is to do nothing. That's the worst thing in life. When you have a focused mind and you have eyes on the prize, doing nothing is not acceptable to you. Doing nothing causes you mental turmoil. You need to really 
wire your brain in a certain way and it's going to drive your pace. Here you have Lamar said tuition did a six mile run with a book bag. There you go. Okay. That's respectable. Joseph sent tuition. Shout out to Joseph. Ariel sent tuition. He said first time sending tuition, wow. 16 years old, peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Shout out to the young man. Yes, indeed. And, and that's going to create a particular mentality. There are a number of things that I've discovered are critically important in the maturation or shall we say development of a human being, particularly of a male human being. One thing I'm very thankful for is that I went to church, um, not necessarily for the spirituality, but more so because it was a, a time where the collection plate would come around. And my grandmother, when I was a very young boy, she would give me some change or she'd give me a dollar to put it into the collection plate. She was trying to drive a habit in me, which is that when the plate comes around, you have to put something in it because the lights have to stay on in the church. And if we don't put anything in the plate, the lights don't stay on and we don't have a place to come every Sunday. That taught me something as a boy that was important for becoming a man. Also athletics and being on teams and experiencing disappointment and playing games and winning games, but also losing games and knowing that life involves both losing and winning and how to deal with both. Those are critical experiences. Often today when I see internet nerds doing weird things or speaking thoughtlessly, I could tell that they didn't grow up playing on sports teams because sports teams teach you a lot of things beyond how to move a ball across a goal line. Hey, Jaden, he's going to catch up earlier. He said, thank you for that answer. Much thanks. Peace to the Saints. Peace to the Saints. We have, Tony says, when you were hyper-focused building businesses starting out, were relationships and exercise health on the back burner? Were you able to balance everything? If so, how? Well, I was always exercising because I've always viewed myself as an athlete. You know, sports were a part of my growing up. And so I never really stopped with sports. In fact, um, I even ruptured my Achilles tendon playing basketball too hard one time. And I noticed that as I was hyper focused on business, the overall intensity that was, you know, characterizing my mindset was evident on the basketball court. It was evident, uh, you know, in the boardroom situation. And so you can't stop being you. So understand this, if you're one who exercises, it doesn't matter what you're pursuing, you're going to continue exercising because if you were to stop doing that, you would stop being yourself. When you have a good habit, it should be so a part of you that there's no way to stop it. If you were to stop it, people would have to ask if you're okay. So that's number one. The number two, are there times where one experiences imbalance, undoubtedly? And those are the follies of a young man or of an inexperienced man. There were times I experienced imbalance. There were times I went without showering for two, three days. Uh, there were times that you know I didn't get to exercise on a given day. But now as a mature man, I would try to stay away from that imbalance because those imbalances are not productive. If you go three days or, or two days on a couple hours of sleep, eventually you're going to crash and catch up on all the sleep. So you're not really cutting a corner like you, you might think. Hey, I do need to apologize to Lamar. He, he said he did a six bar on the book bag. He sent fifty dollars. Baller alert. I it, so I do yes, apologize. indeed. Show respect to, to the ballers. And he Back with another $50. Oh, just to let let's you know what it is. Baller alert, let's do baller alert. And please show respect to our ballers. Okay. And I want everybody to know why. Why? Because there's hierarchy in this world. Why? Because when you raise up in this world, you're going to want your respect. Okay. So if you're not there, fine, but give respect to the people who are there. Men understand hierarchy. And that's why I always show respect to those who are really getting it. You did because they earned it. Okay. Don't get comfortable. Court says peace to the saints, working on becoming a renaissance man, being the best at my job in tech, fitness, and becoming financially free while growing spiritually. Any advice on balancing all of these things? Well, if the only things that you're referring to are the things in your list, that's not a lot. <laughs> those are, you know, those are the basics. So for example, your tech job is your job. Most everyone has a job. Fitness is what keeps you alive. This is in the category of health. Um, and it really only takes a minimum of 30 uh, minutes a day for fitness. And it's going to enhance your ability to do all the other things. 
uh, becoming financially free. That sounds like that might be related to your job, your saving and spending habits, and perhaps some entrepreneurial endeavors. If you're only working eight hours a day, and then you take another hour or two to work on your financial freedom plan, um, you know, it doesn't sound like you're doing a lot of things. And I don't know if maybe the world's changed radically since uh, I was uh, your age. Um, but the truth is that's not a lot. And I really want you guys to get centered on hustle mania, because if you're hanging around people who are not really ambitious, you, you sometimes think you're living at a high standard when you're not. So for example, if you live outside of Las Vegas and you think you know how to box, when, once you come to Las Vegas, you'll figure out you don't know how to box. Well, why is that? Because Las Vegas is the boxing capital of the world. So pretty much the best fighters all live here. And if they don't live here and they live somewhere else and they're really good, they move here. So when you go into a random boxing gym in Las Vegas and you think you're nice, you're about to get your snot box shattered. That's because you have real competition here. Uh, similarly, when I was in Silicon Valley, I realized what work looks like. You dig? Work is serious. Work is long hours. Work is sacrifice. The things you're talking about are fairly basic. And, you know, I want you to have a high standard. I'm encouraging all of you to have a high standard. So I don't say this to be discouraging. I say it quite the opposite, to be encouraging, which is to let you know you can do this and you can do more. And also understand this. A great man outperforms an average man like 10x this, uh, this year, 2023, which is barely underway. Average person came out with zero products. I came out with eight new products. You see what I'm saying? So you have to figure out how to multiply. Okay, we have Tariq said, peace to the saints. Hope this live stakes up as I'm currently at work. This video will be an insightful one I will need as a full-time college student and working 40 hours per week as a 21-year-old. Again, thank you. Peace of the Saints, you know, full-time college student. It's expected that your full-time course load would amount to about 40 hours of you know, engagement between in-class and study. And then your, your work obviously is 40 hours, which you have to be at a certain location. Uh, if I were you, I would ask myself, well, why am I doing that? Not to say you shouldn't be, but everything is worth questioning at least once, right? Some things you got to question multiple times. You dig like, why did I get that girl pregnant? You might have to question that a couple of times so you don't do that again. But with regards to what you're doing right now, if you're in school full time, working full time doesn't necessarily sound like a good idea because generally speaking, when you're fully enrolled in school, you're able to get financial aid or you're able to get work study. So the question is, why are you working full time at age 21 if you're going to college for a purpose? If your college is going to lead to gainful employment with a solid income, why even waste time right now working at CVS full time? Something to ask yourself. I don't have context, but just in case, I just want you to think about that. More says peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Alejandro said, how did Dr. Phillip email about making it sound like an interview? We did send more saying, hey, what I owe, and then... I actually, I actually have a specific video about that. It's, I believe, called How to Engage the Dr. Phil Process, How to Use the Dr. Phil Process. And it specifically talks about the strategies to use. But I'll very briefly say that's on patreon.com slash the Saint in the Center. But I'll, yeah, and there's a, there's a number of, you know, documents and videos that, you know, add to that. Um, but I'll briefly say that the key to structuring conversation so it's not an interview when you're in in an interview the person asks you questions but they never tell you anything about themselves and also the questions aren't going back and forth so generally if a female is engaged if you ask her something she's generally going to ask you something back usually the question you asked her that's number one if she fails to do that then you want to have at least one sentence making a statement very brief pithy and then you lead in with your question and also keeping things light and humorous peppering in jokes as much as possible is going to be very helpful so for example if you were to ask her and don't ask her this, this is just an example because you know in the manosphere people tend to have this foolish question which i don't recommend because they're going to lie but if you were to ask her what's your body count which is a foolish question you should never ask and she says my body body count is eight which is a lie <laughs> then she doesn't ask you back and you want to ask her another question, then you might say, oh, okay, that's what's up. My body, uh, my body count is 800. I'm trying to get to 801. If you could help me out with that. Uh, but anyways, are, are your parents still married? You see how we threw a little comedy. We made a comment about the self, except we gave them no real information. It was just a joke and a tease. So we're still remaining mystery, mysterious and aloof. And then we hit her with a meaningful question. 
that's going to make it flow better. But if she's not giving you questions back, that's a sign that either you're going too deep and this girl is shallow or she's not very engaged or you need to engage her with other activities before you go deep into the mind. Hey, Tariq, who had just got the previous question um, about being a school and college student, he mm -hmm. said currently paying for rent as well as food and others. Yeah, those are all expenses that are generally covered by financial aid. So, you know, and I only say this because there's a lot of money that universities and Pell Grants and uh, subsidized loans, there's just so many resources for students that it's just, I think that there was a, maybe a, a lapse somewhere, unless your parents are wealthy, uh, there was a lapse somewhere because all students are paying for rent and food and other expenses, right? So I just wanna caution you, Tariq, that anytime you see other people having an easier go at something and you're doing the same thing, you might wanna figure out, do they know something you don't know? Because sometimes that's the case, or are they doing something you're not doing? Because the truth is, when it's snowing, some people freeze to death and some people ski. How can we ski in this snow, this snow called university? Okay, we have Haven sent a super chat. He said peace to the saints. Shout out to Haven. Shout out to the saints in Saint City. He also came in on Cash App with $50. Haven. Haven. Baller alert. He said peace to the saints. Shout out to the bosses. Okay. We have Ethan purchased the basic training to teach on living life to the fullest. All right. Pet.com says, Marquette, have you ever stopped yourself from approaching a female merely because you knew approaching her would inflate her ego? Peace to the saints. If it would inflate her ego and not be successful, yeah, I would skip it. But if it's going to inflate her ego, but I can still uh, achieve my blue chip goal, I'm going to carry on. You see, there's nothing wrong with having a win-win situation. You dig? If we can win at the same time, fantastic. Which is to say, say my goal is to beat it down. Just beat it. Just beat it. No one wants to be defeated. You, you know who made that song? King of Pop. Anyways, so if we can both achieve our goals, if her goal is to, you know, feel like she's better than she is, then she's going to let me achieve my goal, which is to go ahead and just beat it. Then, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and kick that game at her, you dig? But if it's just going to be a waste of both of our time, so let's go ahead and save that time and reinvest it elsewhere. Chris said, how do you deal with stress and feeling overwhelmed when running a business and trying to manage multiple women and constantly dealing with challenges in both? Number one, uh, challenge, you know, success is challenge mixed with opportunity. That's what success is. You know, they say more money, more problems. It's, that's not quite the right formula, but essentially when you have more money, that's because you're doing more things. You, you're meeting more people. You're creating more business, more products, more services. You're doing more travel. You're outside more. You have more opportunities. You have more opportunities for challenge as well. It's just the nature of life. The moment you can get comfortable with that and always look for the joy and the goodness in things, you're going to be in a different space. Now, sometimes I encounter challenges and then I say, you know what? Those are problems suitable for a boss. You dig? Like, those are the kind of problems I like. Like, recently I had a, a situation um, in Vegas, which was quite funny. Um, long story short, I was in this uh, institution, and this, this older dude um, basically thought he was about to boss up on me. You dig? Like, older cat thought he was about to boss up on me. And, uh, you know, and I bossed up on him. And then he starts popping off at the mouth and he says, go back to the hood. Obama's not president anymore. So he just starts going off on this racist rant. And obviously he had no sense of who I am. And I was like, all right, cool. I was like, I'm going to get you thrown up out of here. So, you know, he thought he was going to get me thrown out because I look like a young black dude. I'm wearing a ball cap and a letterman jacket. He thinks I'm going to get thrown out. I end up getting him thrown out. But in the process, I said, OK, you know, he called me, you know, all these negative racist names. One, I never called him a racist name back because I'm not going to let him turn me into a racist because he's a racist, number one. And then number two, I said, these are problems fit for a boss. You dig? Like, I, I got to enjoy this and be thankful for the fact that I got him kicked up out of here. And most black guys in my position would have took a L. You heard me? They'd have been rolled up out of here. So you're going to encounter problems, but you have to figure out how you can enjoy the problems that you do have because you're never going to live life without problems. If you're poor, you got a certain set of problems. If you're wealthy, you got a certain set of problems. When you're poor, you ain't got enough money to pay for stuff. When you're wealthy, you got people trying to steal your money. Which problem would you rather have? 
That's number one. Number two, when you say when running a business, well, bruh, look, if you're just running a business, meaning one, and you got problems, you should be thankful that you ain't running more than one business. You see, it's just looking at the correct angle of it and also strategizing and creating systems, meaning you're thinking long-term about how do I deal with this problem I'm experiencing today? Don't treat it like an urgency, treat it like a problem that can be managed with a long-term solution so you can deal with it systematically so it doesn't reoccur. So make an investment in prevention and systems. Here we have Saint TV says, peace to the saints. You're always consistent, Saint, not only with quantity, but quality as well. I appreciate that. And I really do feel that the quality is significant because I can, I can speak from experience. The experience of having done business in many verticals, the experience of having been in paper assets, having been in tangibles, having been in software, hardware, um, you name it, I claim it. And then also having lived around the world and traveled extensively. So there's a lot I can relate to people on. And, you know, that's going to give the ring of authenticity in the advice because I really lived it. You know, I'm not guessing or speaking based on books that I've read. Pisto said, there was a video of you in your backyard recently giving knowledge. Could you upload that to Patreon, please? Also, is there a video where you break down the sources of power of peace to the same? So he's talking about you were on the couch out there. I think it was like two weeks ago. It's kind of worn out. Was that on? That was on uh, YouTube? I guess it was on YouTube, yeah. Oh. Because I said it was on YouTube or IG Live. Okay. Um, it's possible. We may be able to get it up. It depends. If it's not up, there might be a reason it's not up. But I'll consider it. Saint Fitness said, yes, two questions. One, how do you reward yourself after you reach a goal? And two, what drives your success? Please keep the sense. Number one, when you reach a goal, generally achieving the goal is the reward. <laughs> but what you really are talking about, I surmise, is how do you celebrate? You should celebrate according to that which has meaning to you. So you should have a list of the things that you enjoy and you should decide in advance how you are going to celebrate. It doesn't really matter how I celebrate. It matters how you celebrate. Like, for example, I want to live and die in a certain way. You probably want to live and die in a certain way. Um, that being the case, you know, what pleases me may be different from what pleases you, but here's the important piece that you do celebrate. One thing that is consistent among truly ambitious people with high standards, and I experienced this maybe all the way up until 30, is that I never would celebrate. I would achieve a goal and just set a new goal. I never celebrated. And even when I first started to accumulate wealth, I basically just kept trying to do it, right? Like I, I didn't take out time to spend any money. I didn't take out time to enjoy wealth. I just kept trying to accumulate more. And that's not a good life. You know, celebration is important and you should generally do it with the people who matter, which is why we say be good to good people. Hey, justice and intuition. Shout out to justice. And Rob said, peace to the saints off topic. I caught my chick spilled two lies about who she is. I know women tend to lie about who they are a bit to appease themselves in the eyes of men. Red flag or have some grace. Well, Rob, it depends on what the lie was. <laughs> you know, I've heard women lie about uh, tremendous numbers of things. Uh, some I've heard them lie about you know, ex experiencing certain types of sexual abuse uh, as an adult. Um, I've heard them change stories on that. I've heard them lie about their father, him being a bad person when he's not a bad person. I've heard ex tons of lies of all variety, but you really have to assess, you know, what the motivation for the lying was and how that kind of motivation might drive them to do something that could be hurtful to you. If it's a vain lie, um, then fine, you know, but if it's something that could have maybe cause them to hurt you, then that would be something you should be suspicious of. But generally speaking, human beings lie mostly through uh, exaggeration. That's the typical form of lying. People exaggerate. Maybe they make $20,000. They say they make 30000 On PayPal, we have none of the above sent tuition. Shout to none of the above. Uh, we have George sent tuition by a cash app. Shout to George. Jose said a catch up. He said, people trash talk on my IG live. How do I handle them? Uh, you should probably just ignore it and block them. People who do this are evil and they are unimportant. And their, their effort is to gain some importance by gaining your attention. And to starve them of attention would be the most effective thing. 
So I would just block their account and carry on and also be thankful because if you were no one at all, they wouldn't be there. You know that you really have achieved something when people don't like you, but they still tune in. But that's mostly due to their own mental illness. And you don't want to quarrel with fools because you have something to lose and they have nothing to lose. So you really should think twice about that. You know, for example, what does it look like for a rich man to beat up a homeless man? Well, surely no one's going to think the homeless guy is in the wrong and the homeless guy wouldn't lose a thing, but the rich man could lose his entire fortune. So you should leave fools where they are. Okay, we have Ethan, Mayna, and Rohan bought the basic training speech. Shout out to them. Jeffrey sent a cash off instead of tuition. Shout out to Jeffrey. Yeah, yes, there, there are many wicked persons, and that's one of the things that I have in my notes here. Um, and the things that I consider evil are perhaps a little different than what most people might identify as evil. For example, I say remove unfocused and evil persons from your life immediately. Unfocused to me is a sign of evil. You know, unfocused people do evil. Unfocused. What does that mean? They're going nowhere. Unfocused. What does that mean? They distract you because they are themselves distracted. Unfocused means they hold you back. Well, holding you back, distracting you, that's evil. So to me, an unfocused person is an evil person because they're an unproductive person, especially if they're a male. And you have to get them out of your life because they will destroy you along with themselves and they will do it with a smile unknowingly. Huh? Yes, they live in ignorance. The reason you must remove them from your life immediately without any emotion is because they're insidious. Yes, and it's, they're insidiously dangerous. And what I mean is this, they have ideas. You, you're trying to work on a business project. You're trying to work on this specific product, get this specific product to market. This specific product is, play, is priced at $95, right? Like for example, say, say I got this product right here, the same as center boxing gloves, which this is such a fresh product. It's not even listed. These are 95 bucks including shipping. Okay. So including shipping, these are 95 bucks. My boxing gloves that I had bought before these were a hundred bucks, not including shipping. These are better than those. These are 95, including shipping. So say I'm focused on this one product, right? And if you want these, you can cash up to cash tag Marquette. Just put your email address because I haven't even listed them yet. Say my one focus is to get these boxing gloves to market and sell them. That's my one focus. This is how I'm about to start my fortune. And then I have a friend, big air quotes, or an acquaintance, and they're like, oh, you know what else you should do? You should make headgear, or you should also like, you should make boxing shoes, and you should do this, and you should do that. Ideas, ideas, ideas. What happens when you get an infinite number of ideas? You become paralyzed because it's too much to do. A fool can think of more ideas and more things to consider than a productive man can do. So people who are like, oh, I'm an idea person. No, you're not an idea person. You're an unproductive person. People are like, oh, I'm more like an artist. I'm a creative. No, you're not an artist. You're not creative. You're unproductive. I'd much rather have someone who has one bad idea and a whole lot of action than someone who has five great ideas. Because it turns out you can't do five great ideas. You might be able to do one. So people who have ideas are dangerous. They're crippling. They cripple themselves and they cripple you. And think about how evil it is if I got this one product right here that I want to sell and it's ready to go. All I got to do is list it and market it and talk about it. But instead of them saying, oh, good, how can I help with that? They're like, well, maybe you should also sell a mouthpiece. Maybe you should sell headgear. Oh, now you're distracting me, huh? Thank you. How much money do I make selling mouthpieces and headgear that I don't have? Now you want me to start all over on that? Got you. Saints, and now that I mention that, you're going to notice like, wow, I know somebody like that. And I pray that you're not that person. If you are that person, knock it off. You're hurting yourself and you're hurting other people. Mm, that's no good. 
Yeah, these are tie gloves. And if you don't have lace up gloves, you're tripping because if you're really hitting the bag, you need the lace ups because the laces wrap around the wrist and it gives you more wrist support. That's why when you watch professional boxing, they ain't using Velcro. They're using lace ups because it's better for the stability around the wrist. And this is a very high quality glove. And I focused on certain things because I've gone through so many gloves, like, for example, the lining around the uh, the bottom. Like these are the things that wear out. These are the details we have to pay attention to. Also, this this piece right here that holds the thumb in for protection. These are great pieces. You'll never actually find a pair of gloves that are two tone. You dig? You ain't going to find no two tone gloves. You're going to be the only one. It's some real playerism going on here, Saints. And I just love the smell of new. You dig? New is my favorite flavor. Shout out to Wade. He writes, I appreciate the work. Quite. I've been locked in with the work and sparring. That's good. Recovering from a nasty straight right. Oh, if you're recovering, it was really nasty. He writes, any advice on recovering outside of icing? A lot of rest, a lot of water. Because when you say recovering, I'm assuming that you're recovering from a concussion. You were probably slightly concussed. So I would continue lightly exercising, hyper-focusing on hydration, and most importantly, sleep. Sleep is good. And also let, let them know, like, chill. Like, everybody, we sparring. Chill. We have George H. came in on Cash App. He said, Twitch in Monday. Much needed life lessons. Thank you. This is a critical one, and I'm almost uh, tempted to, to do a part two on it because – you can never get enough. And as the world devolves, you need to think about focus in different ways because we're being programmed to have less focus. For example, when I'm not wearing one of the watches that I produce, I might wear an Apple watch because I want to be up on the latest technology and I want to be thinking about how technology is evolving and what kind of softwares I can create. And so even though I don't like electronic watches at all, I like analog gold watches, but I, I use these things so I can stay up to date as a businessman. And one thing it does is it constantly annoys you. It gives you unnecessary reminders of things you don't even want to be reminded of. That being said, the ability of the human being to focus is less because we're being conditioned to look for constant dopamine rushes from social media, from notifications, which are essentially uh, something reaching out saying, hey, you're special, you're important, people are interested in you, people are giving you attention. So that being the case, um, I now have my goal set at a 14-day sprint. I can focus my mind intensely for 14 days. And if you're not going to be intense about what you're doing, it's a waste of time. Don't do it. You ain't serious about it. Do something you can be intense about because then you can get the outcome faster and you're going to produce a higher quality work and you're probably going to have a competitive advantage over the other people trying to do what you're trying to do, right? If you're intense about it, you're serious. And maybe you're serious because you have an advantage. You're especially good at it or especially interested in it. Justin said such an important topic. Okay. Yes, indeed it is. I appreciate that. We have... Gogan purchased the gloves, Walton purchased the gloves, and Isaiah purchased the gloves. And that's good because you're going to need these for Fight Club. You dig? And these are 16 ounces. And the 16 ounce is good for training and sparring. And what I mean by that is you want a glove that's heavy enough that when you're hitting the bag, you're not going to hurt your hands. And you want a glove that's heavy enough that when you're sparring, you're not hurting the other person that you're sparring with. So 16 ounces is an ideal training glove for sparring and for hitting the bag thank you i appreciate you as well yeah Hayden is back again so this is number three he said gotta love the gladiator sport in, in a real way man i'm gonna have to look at that footage of you and uh saint flows going in again because that was that was epic um and you know the sass and fight clubs we can only have in a very regulated way because we don't want anyone getting injured but it's a necessary part of you know, creating that savage within you. And we all need that. You, we can't be nice out here, you did. Cisco just bought the gloves. Smart man. And for those that are buying them, they will ship out Monday morning if you buy them this weekend. Um, if you are out of the United States, you can email support at Marquez and we can let you know how much the shipping will cost because there will be a little additional cost for you. Welcome to another cash app. He said, those gloves remind me of radio rocking. <laughs> Here we go. 
And, and you're not going to find any like this. And, and trust me, I know, and I know Haven knows, all of the gloves you find are going to be extremely basic, completely plain. It's going to have some some brand that you never heard of or some brand that's never heard of you and doesn't care about you on your wrist. Yeah, we have Linus and a few thousand some more put. What is your strategy for approaching a group of beautiful women? Every time I do it, it results in awkward silences oh, wow. and making witty remarks or that don't end up landing well. Wow, that's that's curious. It might be part of it might be a personality thing, but I really relish the situation because to me it's fun. And what a lot of people forget to do is to have fun. This is your life, right? So whether it's boxing, whether it's talking to women or pursuing something in business, when you're having fun, you're more attractive in general. And number two, if you don't uh, achieve your goal, but you also enjoy the process, it brings a different light to the experience. But when you approach a group of women and you do it in utter confidence, and remember, when you're approaching a group of women, you're more like a performer at this point because it's less of an interpersonal, in, interpersonal engagement. And when that's the case, you know, I really enjoy it. You know, you, you pulled up, the spotlight is on you, you heard me, all eyes on you. And the truth is what they're looking at you to see is if there's a crack in the armor. You heard me, they want to see if you're really who you're presenting yourself to be. And when you show that you are, oh, it's going to go swimmingly. And the key is to be able to engage the whole group, but let the one know that you're interested in, let her know that you're interested in her. So it's usually a fun thing. I, I highly recommend it, actually. And I think that you can be really successful in that situation. But do know that it's not a situation where she's about to leave with you, you about to exchange contact info, and you might link up later. I'll give you an example. Like recently, I, I walked up on a group of chicks, about five of them. Bam! But the one I was going for was bad, bad. I walked up on him. I said, hold on one second. You, talking to the one I wanted, I was like, you need to tell her to take a look at them because she going to need to talk to one of them because I need to talk to you. So, Shorty, which one do you like? You got options. But hurry up and make it fast. I'm trying to work right here. And they start chuckling. And the key is you're, you're creating goodwill. You're having fun. And then you carry on from there. But hey, man, at the end of the day, you need to be enjoying it. You need to be continuing to practice at it. And number three, that silence only comes when, when the flow has stopped. And remember, you're the flow. You're deciding what the overall emotional environment is. If you came in happy, fun, enjoying yourself, that's going to be the vibe. Unless there one, there's one girl who's fat and ugly, it gets like that fat and ugly, she's, she's evil. And, you know, she's going to do evil stuff because she know you ain't there for her. But in the absence of that, things are going to go swimmingly. Keep at it. So I want to reiterate my first point, which is, number one, your goals should be meaningful, lest you won't even really make a pious effort at it. And by meaningful, that means that you should have real dreams, not pipe dreams. And when you have that, then you're able to get serious about winning. Over which period are you able to win? The period over which you can be maintain focus. I think that's about 14 days. A 14-day sprint on a goal is reasonable. But also remember that every single day, and I posted this in the Discord for the members at patreon.com slash the saint in the center. Every day you should wake up and say, what is my goal today? What is today about? Yes, today has a theme. Today has an outcome. What is today about? And then say, okay, if I can achieve this one thing today, just this one thing, today will have been a successful day. And that one thing ideally is related to building into that 14-day goal. And think about how great and how better off you'd be if you're able to look back on your months and your years and see every single day, oh, what was that day about? That's what I achieved that day. That's what I did that day. You'll be a great man. Okay, we have Mitchell just bought the gloves. He said, I can't wait to use the boxing gloves. Shout out to Mitchell because I heard good things about Mitchell's hands. I didn't have the good fortune of seeing them myself, but people reported back to me that Mitchell had hands, and that I like to hear. And if someone else reports that you have hands, you have hands. And there's a real beauty to being a gentleman and being civilized and also being a savage. There's a beauty to it. There's something that's very alluring to when a woman can see you in a business suit, you fill out the business suit well, you have proper etiquette, good manners, you're articulate and charming. And then you can also 
uh, you know, give give out them hands when needs be. That that's just an alluring combination. The most important thing that I want to encourage you guys to to do, the most important I want to, most important thing I want to encourage you guys to do is first shut the fuck up. I want to encourage you to shut the fuck up. And what I mean by that is we talk so much about what we're going to do. I'm going to be a millionaire. I'm going to do this. I'm going to achieve that. And mostly we're we're just making up lies. I can't tell you how many people have said they're going to be a millionaire. It's almost never the people who super chat is the people who are not super chatting who say things like I'm going to be a millionaire or I made this amount of money on crypto or I did this and that. Those are not serious people. Serious people shut up and they get to work. Best thing you can do is shut up and get to work. And also don't let a day slip by you. For example, if you were at basic training, we pretty much got everything in that day. The, the gentleman came, we assembled at the place of learning. We engaged in a lecture and study. Uh, then we went out on the town. We you know, socialized amongst ourselves, met women. And then we went for a run at like 1 a.m., 2 a.m. Went for a six mile run uh, up and down like uh, 13 staircases and, and then called it a day. We got everything in. I say that to say, you don't have to talk about it. You just need to be about it. And too many people are talking about it. And those are almost never the ones that are really about it. Think of the talker as the person who's similar to that idea person. They got ideas, but no actions. They have thoughts in excess, deeds in lack. So I want to encourage you to shut the fuck up. I really do. There's too much talking going on, especially if you're a male. And beyond that, you have a number of human assets at your disposal, whether it's your, your lady, your friends, your family, your mother, your father, um, or even people who formally work for you. And you have to remember that they have to be managed. If you're the leader, you're the person probably who's sharpest, meaning sharpest at getting to the goal, which should be profit. You know, recently I was collaborating with someone and we were doing a project and they kept pausing to tell personal stories. In the back of my head, I was thinking, geez, I have this inclination to stab you in the eyeball with an ink pen. I didn't, but I had to keep redirecting the person back to the prize. That's my job as a boss. Keep your eyes on the prize since you can't do it yourself. And what you need to understand is that as a boss, and you should always think of yourself as a boss because as a man, you're a leader. You never want to be the distraction. You always want to be the one that's keeping the eyes on the prize. And often, if you got a team, you got to keep other people's eyes on the prize. I had some assistants. And I asked one of them to do a job. Then the other one's getting involved in this. The one simple task I asked this chick to do. And I had to tell her, like, Shorty, she don't need help to do that. You guys are really just trying to socialize. Yeah, stay focused on what you're doing. Let her focus on what she's doing. If she needs help, let her struggle through it. It's called management and leadership. Not micromanagement, but appropriate management until they understand the standard. Till we understand that the standard is while we're working, we're going to work. We're not going to engage in conversation, gossip, and, you know, all, we're not going to have the TV on in the background. While we're working, we're going to work. Okay, we have on PayPal, one of the above facts of what is the breakdown of a typical consultation with you? To get the meat and potatoes, how would it look like for someone who's close to six figures but wants to get to the next level in terms of annual salary? The consultation is so circled around your goals. Generally speaking, what will happen is you go on to marquettism.com, you book your consultation, and then you'll send an email with, if you book it at marquettism.com, there's actually a form that'll collect the goal. It'll t ask you what the goal is. And if you were to, for example, become a, an emperor, excuse me, an executive or an entrepreneur at marquettism.com, you could still book a 40 minute. We actually have that option available now. Um, You'll send an email to support at Marquettism. Say, hey, I want to talk about this or my outcome is this. My goal is this. Then when we meet, we're going to very quickly figure out where you're at today, right? Because you can't route a GPS unless you know where you're starting. Figure out where you're at, where you need to go. Then we're going to backwards plan the steps. 
if we can actually get started on some of those steps and some of those steps are more challenging, we'll actually get started on it during the consultation. But the consultation is going to go A, fast. B, it's going to be based on what your stated outcome is. If your stated outcome doesn't make sense, we're going to interrogate it and figure out what does make sense. And then we're going to get to work as quickly as possible, cutting out the fact, the fat, making it something that's absolutely manageable for you. Jimmy on Nick sent a cash out piece of tuition message in the chat. His message is, how do you expand your standards and goals for yourself? How does Cindy say, I know you're greater than that, and it put me in another fear. Mm. Thankful to be around hustlers and honorable men. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. I think, number one, you've already started on the correct foot, which is when you're around someone who has the decency or better than that, the greatness to check you, right? And I've said previously that you should be around people who give you the three checks, you dig? They'll check you when you when you off out of line. They'll check up on you to see how you're doing. And they'll also get a check with you, you dig? Put some money in your pocket or collaborate with you on a business venture. So that's step one, which you're doing correctly. You're around people who are honest with you and ambitious, and you should seek to do more of that. It's going to be helpful. Then the other piece is uh, you need greater intensity, which means that you have something about you that's maybe too comfortable. Maybe you might live with your parents. Um, maybe you're hanging around people who have low standards. So the things you're doing are viewed as acceptable to them. There's something that's giving you comfort that you need to rip away so that you're uncomfortable or you need to go out and take more risks and get your soul torn out. One thing I remember from our conversation recently and I hope you don't mind me sharing this. I, I just want to share because I think it'll be useful to everyone watching is that uh, you had a job interview and you didn't record, screen record the job interview. These are the small things that are going to give you the advantage. You should have screen recorded the job interview so that you could remember the questions that were asked so that you could become a master at answering them because you'll have more job interviews. And then you can utilize that information in your next job interview, especially if they say, oh, do you have any questions for us? You're going to take the questions you were asked in the last job interview of the same type and say, I don't have any questions for you, but um, I specialize in X, Y, and Z, or I've studied X, Y, and Z quite a bit. Does this uh, factor into the job at, at your corporation? Do, do these things factor in? Surely they're going to say yes. And so you basically positioned yourself you know, in a way of saying, you know, hey, here are some more of my merits in case you didn't know. But the key is those little things. Success accumulates. Failure also accumulates. You, you fail to do things, that's going to accumulate. Or you did the wrong things, that's going to accumulate. Success accumulates also. So the number one issue is that you're too comfortable. There's something about you that's just, you need to get your soul torn out. Um, I think probably the interview you had was kind of one slap on the head, but maybe you need to get your helmet slapped off in a, a more serious way. But remember, it's, I want every, and this is to everybody, this is not to Nick in particular. We don't all want the same thing. Some people really want to be a millionaire. Some people really don't. Some people just want to be comfortable and that's cool, but be real with yourself. And once you're real with yourself, that's going to define how intense you are. That's going to define which goals you pursue. Uh, so don't sit here looking at this camera or, or looking at your, your screen and say, oh, I want to be a millionaire, but you're not thinking like a millionaire on a daily basis and you're not taking millionaire millionaire uh, risk. You're not taking millionaire opportunities. You're not pursuing millionaire education. You're not pursuing millionaire situations. You know, you got to walk it. You got to walk it and you got to be realistic. Okay, Lee and Nick would say, Correct. Thank you for the honest game. Keep your foot on your own neck. Ooh, I like that. Keep your foot on your own neck. That's game right there. Um, someone that purchased the basic training said that they wouldn't want to download it. Um, that's only one person said that. If you, we will get the links that you will got this live stream. But yes. And you can stream it. It doesn't have to be downloaded. It's a stream link. But if you'd like to download it for some reason, we could uh, get you a download link. Okay. We have Orlando sent $50 on Cash App. Baller alert. Peace to the Saints. Marcos says, Peace to the Saints. I bought and used the gloves for basic training. Yeah, true he was story. the first person. He was the first person to ever use these right gloves. The yeah, um, absolutely. He said, And the comfort and support on my wrist and hands was helpful since I've been more conscious than usual compared to more time mm, That makes sense, right? Absolutely. We have Ricky came back on Cash App. He said, Great stream with great information in UV. Shout out to Ricky. I appreciate the consistency. We have Steve, who I will say uh, 
pretty much almost everyone at basic training came with the double bag. Oh yeah, shout out to Steve. Yeah. There's a lot of double bags. Right, there. shout out. Steve said, peace to the Saints, Mark Hope you're enjoying your day. I know I'm not active on these live streams, but I'm always supporting on Patreon watching mm -hmm. the replays. Sending blessings on, blessings on your wealth, health, wealth, and all your loved ones. I appreciate that. Thank you very much, Steve, for the kind words. And may I at this time acknowledge all of the members at patreon.com slash the saint and the center. That's where the, the family is. Those are the folks I know really support the work. So thank you to all. And if you do want to you know, really become a part of this thing of ours, you know, boss up and get on patreon.com slash the saint and the center. Yeah. Winners are focused. Winners are focused. You can tell when you're around winners because they're not dealing with BS. They don't have time to be distracted. In fact, there's an intensity about them. It makes some people uncomfortable. Some people don't feel good being around winners. These kind of personalities like, oh, positive vibes only. Winners have a focused vibe. Forget positive. We have a focused vibe. So I want you all to know that you can tell when you're around a winner and you want to give, a, give off that same kind of energy. I remember the first time I was keenly aware that I was around someone who was a focused person because... When someone, when they were listening to someone, they were listening intensely. And if someone would try to interject, they wouldn't even break eye contact with the main speaker. They'd wait until the main speaker was finished, respond to them, and then turn to the other person and say, would you repeat what you said? And then hyper-focus. This is common among high achievers and people who are of high intelligence who have good communication skills. For example, it's been said of uh, Bill Clinton that when you're talking, you have this feeling that you were the only person in the world. It's called focus. Winners are focused persons because it turns out that it takes a lot of consistency and discipline, which means that you have to remove other things. You're focusing on one thing. You have to remove other things, which is to say that anytime you want to win, there's an expense to it. It's called opportunity cost. If I'm deciding to focus on boxing, I'm also deciding not to focus on basketball. I happen to love basketball, but I ain't picked up a basketball since I started boxing in real life. I have not. And I used to love basketball. I don't even watch basketball anymore. I only watch boxing. And recently when I was at the Super Bowl party, after it, I was like, well, what was I doing here? <laughs> You're like, I'm not going to this. I was like, remind me not to do this again next year because it's out of line with things that are within my small area of focus. Okay, we have... Dylan said, great game, a great mention. No, peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Okay, we have Alex said, peace to the saints. Salam. Loving the knowledge you were teaching this evening, big brother. Jotting my notes down as you teach. Peace to the saints. Thank you very much. Very well. If you're wondering, Marquette, have I been focused? Well, finances are not the only measure, but your bank account will help you calculate if you have been focused or you've been a victim of your own inconsistency. It'll help you figure out if your lack of winning and lack of fighting spirit uh, is resulting from your addictions or your vices. Because even if you earn very little money, to save is something that everyone can do. Everyone can save 10% of their income. And if you've done this consistently over time, you should have thousands of dollars in your bank account. I don't care if you work at 7-Eleven or McDonald's. You should have thousands of dollars in your bank account. If your bank account is on E or in the negative, or if it's less than $1,000, that is a representation of your vices. That is a representation of your lack of, uh, of, your lack of consistency. Even a person who works on minimum wage should have at least $2,000 in their bank account. So when I say it's a representation of your addictions or of your vices, what I'm saying is maybe you're addicted to Starbucks coffee, which is expensive, uh, and you've been buying Starbucks every morning for the last 10 years when you could have been saving $8 every morning for the last 10 years, $8 a day. What's that, about uh, $24, excuse me, $240 a month? Yeah, about $240 a month. That's that's a decent amount of money. You can do something with that. That's $240 a month over 10 months. That's $2,400. So yeah, everybody could have at least $2,000 in their bank account. 
So if you don't have that, that's an expression of your vices and of your inconsistency. By vices, I mean your inclination to make bad decisions and do the wrong thing. Maybe you're wasting money on alcohol. Why would you buy something that hurts you? Huh? You're paying money to hurt yourself? That's an unnecessary expense and a vice. Maybe you've been losing your money on gambling. Uh, you betting on the Super Bowl. Why? <laughs> you have no particular advantage at that. Um, or maybe you're spending your money on cigarettes or the countless other vices that exist. So your bank account will let you know if you've been inconsistent and victim of your own vices. It will not reflect if you're a low wage earner. It will not reflect if you have a crummy job and a dumb boss. It will reflect your inconsistency and your vices or oppositely your merit and your consistency. Everyone should have at least $2,000 in their bank account. Hey, Brian, Sanjay, keep on with Prosperity and most importantly, focus to all the saints. Yes. To the big homie, one love. Indeed, appreciate it. I want to encourage you, and this is going along the line of what I said earlier in terms of don't talk, just deliver like a mute mailman. You can make your own life easier by under promising and over delivering under promise and over deliver you make your your life harder when you do the opposite average people as i say they they lie in the the typical variety of the lie is exaggeration and so what they generally will do is they'll over promise and they'll under deliver you should do the opposite i'll give you an example i was victim of this recently not necessarily that i over promised but i didn't properly uh estimate as a businessman estimate human nature so for example my backpack briefcases, which are finally getting in order. I have my warehouse is ready to get these things shipped out, shipped out uh, next week. Now my my freight service was behind schedule, and my warehouse was behind schedule. So the timeline that I told people it would be ready to ship, I should have pushed that back. You heard me? I should have pushed that back under promise and then deliver early. Instead, I gave them the timeline that I had from my freight company and my warehouse. And those were not accurate because what do human beings do? Human beings over promise, under deliver. That was a lesson for me. I already knew the lesson, but here's the thing. We're inconsistent as human beings and reminder is necessary. Under promise, over deliver. It makes your life easier and it allows you to be honest. And being honest is a difficult thing to do, but it is our responsibility it makes us greater. Appreciate you, Scotty. Now, there are two sources of, well, I got some serious notes here today, folks. There are two sources of distraction. I'm going to make it simple for you. The self, you, and others. Two sources of distraction, yourself and others. That's it. When other people are distracting you, they're generally distracting you with ideas, not ideas that are related to what you're currently doing. And they're distracting you with ideas, which are thoughts and words, not actions. When you're distracting yourself, you're either comparing yourself to others. You're wasting time looking at other people's IG and what they have and what they do, the vacations they go on, the attractiveness of their wife. Or you're distracting yourself with what I call temporary minor joy. Understand temporary minor joy might be you're looking at a funny reel on Instagram. You're looking at a funny short on YouTube. It's temporary, lasting a short time, and it's a minor joy. So you're getting distracted by a minor joy instead of working on your business or working on your goals to, prov to provide yourself a major joy. Here's an example of a major joy. A major joy is when you can fly to Ethiopia and go to Mount Toto and hang out with Ethiopian Orthodox monks and look at a beautiful view from a mountain and do that for an entire day. That's a major joy. And it's a milestone in your life, maybe even something on your bucket list. It's a major joy. It lasts a long time and it has depth to the experience. Huh? So what you should be doing is in the absence of a major joy, you're building up, you're earning the major joy by staying focused. 
So don't ever trade a temporary minor joy, scrolling and watching a funny video that makes you chuckle. Don't exchange a minor joy for a major joy. The time you waste on minor joys will take away your ability to enjoy major joys. So what I'm saying is by the time you didn't scroll through all them damn videos, you lost an hour of your life. By the time you took that phone call and let your mom talk too long, you done lost 30 minutes of your life. By the time you went and took that girl on a, a dinner date and you weren't even confident that she even likes you, you lost two hours of your life and 50 bucks or even a hundred bucks. I guess now with, with uh, Biden, you didn't lost a hundred bucks. So you're allowing minor joys, things that are relatively unimportant, but a little bit fun to rob you of greater things, which is why a wise man thinks and plans for what is bigger. Huh? Philip says, peace to the saints. Thank you for the slap. I'm angry with your word. I appreciate your consistency and fire. Appreciate you as well. Thank you. Now, opposite of the distractions that come from the self and others, let's talk about focus and production coming from the self and others. When focus and production comes from others, that means that they're giving not words and ideas, but rather they're giving service toward a defined plan. That means you, you had to have a goal and a plan. A goal is an outcome. A plan is a method or a strategy. You got to have that. People can't help you unless you have a goal and a plan, which means you got to have a script and say, hey, here's your part. Here's the script. Execute this. If you ain't got that, they don't know what to do to help you. That's one of the things I learned in networking. One of the things I learned in raising capital, fundraising, getting investors. They often say, how can I help you? If you ain't got an answer to that, you're screwing up and you're not a serious person. Focus and production coming from others manifests in the form of service toward a defined plan. And guess who defines the plan? You. From the self, focus and production comes when you don't compare yourself to others. Rather, you compare yourself to your previous self. Today, I exercised harder than I did yesterday. Today, I made my website better than it was yesterday. Today, I created more products for sale than I had yesterday. That's positive self-focus that leads to productivity and profit. You good? Here's another big one. The ability to say no. Say no to others and say no to yourself. Huh? Ghost said Jake Paul's a plus 250 by knockout. What do you think about this prop bet? Uh, now, I don't bet much. I don't sports bet really at all. If I do, it's on boxing. So I, I forget what these things mean. Plus means if you bet 100, you win 250. If you bet 100, you win 250. Are you sure that's how it is? Mm He's -hmm. a real gambler. <laughs> you I bet 100. You had, you've been really good with your boxing bets. I agree. So you bet 100, you win 250. Yeah. Like a negative is a big okay. So what do I think about that prop bet? I think that it probably is accurate, which is to say you're, you're not getting a favor there in as much as the Fury clan is there in Saudi Arabia. I saw the father as well as Tyson and they're in good spirits and they're not going to be embarrassed to lose the boxing matches not ideal, but to be knocked out would be a, an embarrassment and it would be despicable. These boys are gypsies and you know they're fighting people and they have fighting spirit. I don't think that they will accept a knockout. Um, I haven't watched much of, uh, what's the kid? The Fury kid, Tommy Fury. I think he's a bum, uh, but I'm hoping that he, I'm hoping I'm thinking that his family's probably trained him up. I wouldn't take this prop bet. I would only to ever take a prop bet when it's very clear, when it's screaming at you. This is not screaming at me. It is possible. I think this can happen. This can happen, but it's not screaming at me. So I wouldn't take that prop bet. And remember the purpose of betting and odds is so that you can lose. Uh, the odds are set such that the bookmakers make the money gambling. Betting is gambling. Gambling is bad. Only do it when you have a competitive advantage or you feel really strong. I don't feel really strong about that.
Thank you for that uh, that note. Yeah, we got the pay per view. We're gonna watch. Check that out. That'll be a good one. The importance of saying no. Saying no is what gives you more time. Saying yes is generally what takes away your time. Somebody got 30 ideas they want to involve you in. You're like, sure, sure, yeah, yeah. Now you've lost a lot of time. Someone invites you out to coffee, but you don't really like them, and you don't do any business together, and it's not a real relationship, but you win anyways. Oh, you just lost some time by not saying no. Bosses know how to say no. And here's the thing. When you're a boss, you're sought after. People are going to seek you for a lot of different opportunities. So you should say no frequently and quickly because here's the thing. When you say no, it's easy to turn around and say yes, they'll be happy. But if you say yes and then turn around and change it to no, you're going to look like a fool or, or a, I don't want to use the real word, but it ain't going to be a good look. So it's easy to change a no to a yes. People tend to be happy about that. But to change a yes to a no, people tend to not be happy. So you want to start off with no. And it's okay if you're a person who is successful, people know that you're busy. They know you have a lot of obligations. You have a lot of money plays running. So when you say no, they're not surprised or angry. They shouldn't be. So say no often. It's all right. And it's probably necessary because if here's what happens when you say yes a whole bunch you're going to look up and figure out like wow i'm working on everybody else's goal but i'm not working on my own goal and that's bad there are some people that i grew up with or i used to go to school with or i used to do business with whom presently our lives have made such uh have drifted away so far that we don't have a lot in common our lives are different we don't have any business intersections. So really, there's no sense like they come in town like, hey, I'm in Vegas. Let's get together. And every now and then I'm foolish enough to do it just out of nostalgia. But mostly I, I need to say no because it's not a good use of my time. You know, we're no longer in similar circumstances. We have different values, different ambitions. And so it's appropriate for me to say no. You caught up? Yeah. All right. Folks, I'll start winding down right now. I'll give you guys some time to send in your comments, questions, uh, as we uh, wind this one down. I acknowledge Solon. He writes, I truly appreciate you, Marquette. You have helped me in more ways than one. I'll follow your example to win. I'll put my foot on my neck. Indeed. I want you to remember what we said earlier, and it's ironic that one of the saints had asked about that because I actually had it in my notes. He had mentioned lying, which is a very common piece of the human experience. The worst thing you can do is lie to yourself, though, right? Other people are going to lie to you. When you lie to yourself, then you're really in bad shape. But lying generally comes in exaggeration, and that's why people tend to overpromise because they're exaggerating. And one thing I want you guys to remember, if you find that someone's consistently exaggerating to you or lying to you, don't do business with them because it's never going to go well in the future because you're not going to be able to deliver on time. The money's going to get funny because they're not a realistic person. They're not a rational numbers-based person. People who are numbers-based, they tend to be more accurate. Those are the kind of people you want to work with. And when we're talking about people, you have to be able to assess people. If you're not good at assessing people, you won't be good at creating a team, managing a team, and leading a team to success. You have to be able to build a team if you want to win. And my, some of my uh, closing words are, you need to learn to hate ideas and love action. I repeat, you must learn to hate ideas and love action. For ideas are plentiful and they're largely worthless. Action is rare and it's extremely valuable. And it's rare because it, it requires effort. You know, nobody wants to break a sweat nowadays. Yeah, focus is definitely a muscle and muscles are muscles. <laughs> which is to say that everything that you don't utilize begins to deteriorate, even in your mathematics skills. So your parents are taking the easy route and that's not surprising because you probably wouldn't be in this state if they didn't take the easier route earlier in your life. 
And what I mean by that, I had to walk to school even though my grandmother had a car. And when I was in high school, I had to take the public bus to school. So, you know, very few things were easy. And for that, I learned how to engage in struggle. Your parents are doing the easiest thing, which is to medicate you, which is not a solution. They'll have your medication for your whole life. This is foolish. What would be wiser would be to remove some of the things that we know to be a burden to you, uh, which would be reducing cellular time, reducing uh, electronics around you, and also, most importantly, making you go outside, spend more time uh, at a coffee shop, Panera Bread, Starbucks, doing your work there. Why? Because you're not about to put on Pornhub, I hope in Starbucks. So if you wake up, work out, shower, and then go straight to Starbucks and work the whole day there until it's time to go to bed, you've already removed a lot of the time you'd spend uh, whacking off just because you can't do it in public. That's one of the easy fixes. And I also want you to remember that you're a grown man. If you're watching me, you're a grown man. I don't care if you're 16. And I also want to be clear that your, your parents are off some BS. Um, ADHD medication is not going to help you. I'm sorry. It's just not going to help you. It can medicate you, but it's not going to help you. When I say help, I'm talking about a solution. I'd respect it if you take the medication and then you don't have to take it again because you're healed. But they're basically creating a dependency. You already have dependencies. That's the problem. You have a dependency on pornography. You have a dependency on escapism, distraction, video game, uh, watching foolish videos where people are babbling about nonsense but provide no solutions, and they're adding to that. And it's okay. It doesn't mean they're bad persons. It might mean they're without knowledge or experience or they don't understand you, which can certainly happen. There's a major generational gap between you and your parents. Heck, there's a generational gap between you and I, and I'm not much older than you. So... You need solutions, not Band-Aids. You need solution, not medication. Can the young adult faculty follow us up one line? I believe is that when you reach a significant goal, you can coast. That's clearly not the case at the highest level. It explains to me why Kobe was still waking up at 4 a.m. to shoot around despite being the best player in the world. That's correct. And also, when you become the best player by being a certain way, that's who you are. So that don't turn off. You <laughs> think that that doesn't turn off? Like me, I like winning. You hear me? That doesn't turn off. <laughs> it's never going to be enough W's where I'm like, you know what? I don't need any more W's. No, I always want it. That doesn't turn off. If you're faking it, yeah, it's going to turn off because it was never really there. But if that's who you are, that's going to stay consistent. And you're right, the sad reality is the lazy multitude, they wanna get rich so they don't have to work. Not realizing that success generally brings more work, I kid you not. The more successful I am, I have to hire more employees. Now I have to do more accounting. I have to you know, pay out more wages. I have to manage more people. I have to talk to people in different time zones. I have to do more flying. Success means more work. Uh, but it also just means when you're playing, when you're enjoying, you get to enjoy at a higher level and also some of the small fires that might burn down an average person is just a little flicker to you. You dig, it's a bill, go ahead and pay it. You hear me, you ain't got to stress about it. So only a fool is trying to become rich so they don't have to work. And that person will never become rich. Okay, go to the back, he said, Paul plus 182 by decision. Thoughts, I don't gamble much, but usually on pricing signing thoughts. Yeah, and you know, again, my, my stance and the stance of the assassin is stay away from gambling. Um, but uh, Paul, when, plus 182, does that mean if you bet $100, you win, you win $182? Yeah, by decision, not just, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would probably be more inclined to put some money on that one. But before that, I would certainly watch a lot more footage. You know, if you have time, I watch a lot more footage to become more sophisticated. Neither of them have significant careers. I mean, both have had uh, eight or less fights, right? Like something like that. Um, under 10. Less, yeah. yeah, under 10 fights. So you can probably watch every fight they ever had. I watched just a little bit of uh, Tommy Fury. The ball garbage. The ball is garbage. Uh, <laughs> he is utter garbage. Jake Paul looks decent on the mitts. He had a nice knockout against Nate, who is not a boxer. He's not really fought any good boxers, and Tommy Fury is not a good boxer, but the difference is 
He's not an NBA player. He's not an old guy like some of the MMA fellas that Jake fought. So he he's durable. So we can expect that he's durable. And do we know how many rounds this this bout is? Yeah, check on that. That matters. How many rounds it is matters. But I would feel much more comfortable betting on the decision versus the knockout. Eight rounds. Eight okay, so so eight rounds is uh, relatively short for a pro fight. So that's good. That makes it a better uh, chance that Tommy Fury will have time to survive. And just Paul for like the street win is negative 160. He needed that 160 to get 100. So he's favored. He's favored. Yes. Yeah, so nothing wrong with betting um, Paul just for a straight win. Um, but one thing I want you guys to know is that Jace, uh, Jake Paul and his team, they're picking, they're cherry picking the fights very effectively. So he for sure is going to win. And the question is how? So I wouldn't see anything wrong with taking, you know, 500 and putting it on Paul for the win by any outcome, whether it's knockout decision is just like Paul for the win. That's a simple bet. And then you take another 500 and then put it on Paul for the decision. So you're basically um, making it a little more conservative. Thank you, Mitchell. Thank you for your time. Peace to the Saints. Peace to the Saints. On uh, cash out, we have gauge that peace to the Saints is meditation a essential meditation essential awareness and meditation is essential and meditation ideally would come at the very least once a day ideally in the morning um, it'd be best if it came twice a day at the start and end of the day and that's really getting to the spiritual side of life which most of us in the modern era neglect both both the male and the female some females make uh, meager attempts at it by engaging in tarot cards and goofy things. But meditation is that alone time, that silence, that slow time. And that's also important for reconditioning the mind. You know, sometimes we only have quiet time when we're in the shower because half of you guys can't even sit on the crapper without being on the cellular phone. So meditation is the conscious choice to be in silence and at peace and alone with your thoughts. I want to talk to you a little bit about effective networking. This is critically important because, again, I emphasize team. A lot of people network, and which means they're generally wasting time and getting drunk and eating finger foods. It's a total waste. You're destroying your health. You're, it's just all bad. Let me tell you how to make your networking effective. Networking is effective when you are talking to an individual and you you go on this thought experiment you say can myself and this individual go and have a meal one on one and we're both comfortable neither of us feel awkward and we can have a conversation that flows comfortably which is to say could this turn into friendship could this turn into something greater if the answer is no we wouldn't feel comfortable one on one having a conversation over a meal Hey, nice to meet you. Here's my business card or nice to meet you. Let me shoot you an email. Carry on. Because the purpose of networking is talking to someone who likes you and will have the qualities of a friend such that if you were to call them, they'll answer. And if you were to ask something of them, they'll deliver. And that has to exist on the foundation of mutual respect and appreciation. So if that comfort level is not there, you're wasting your time talking and you're wasting your time exchanging info because you're never going to link up again and you won't be able to pull anything from the relationship. So it's not really networking. It's just idle talk. Okay, Barrett said, back to said, I heard you mention two weeks sprint saying, is this something you picked up in business? As an analyst, I'm learning project frameworks such as agile framework, which is similar to these sprints. Sure. And I probably use the term sprint just from being in tech and agile is a, a reasonable framework. The reason it's 14 days, two weeks is because I'm very much so invested in the idea of intensity and maintaining intensity over six months is not realistic. Maintaining intensity over one month is not realistic. But when you can hit something hard, two weeks is a reasonable length. And so that's why I put the sprint at about two weeks, 14 days. Yeah, so the last piece, Saints, is stop being scared. It wastes time. Stop being scared. It takes away from your focus. And it's worth saying twice because so much of what we deal with as human beings is fear. 
and fear presents itself in many ways and, and doubt fear presents itself and you looking into all the ideas why because you need ideas no because you're trying to stop yourself from actually getting started on something that might fail you you only figure out if you're going to fail if you get started and that's fear causing you to look at all these ideas so that you don't have to get started and figure out if you're going to fail or not and mostly you won't because if you really want something you're going to keep rerouting and redesigning and altering strategy until it works you'll never hear someone say i tried everything and it didn't work that's not true if you tried everything you would have tried something that works so remember that have no fear be around productive persons do effective networking with people who actually vibe with you and will be able to help you along your journey be good at developing teams managing teams being a part of teams be accurate speak honestly such that you would under promise and over deliver and be intense about your 14 day sprints knowing that if you're going to actually achieve something you have to have real dreams not pipe dreams dream big plan small execute intensely saints it has been a